Wow. We are finally going to talk about my period, which for some reason the internet has been wondering about for far too long. And we're finally talking about it because Playtex Sports sponsored me. Hey guys, it's Molly here again for another video and yep, we're really doing it. We're going in. We are talking about my monthly visitor, Ant Flo, the big red river, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I refer to it as the massacre in my pants once a month. <laughs> I'm going to take it seriously, you guys. I'm going to be like your health teacher for... Honestly, this video will probably be way longer than it should be because I feel like I have a lot to talk about because you'd think I'm just a normal woman and I get my period, but what is a normal woman in a normal period? There is none. So I'm going to be telling you all about my specific period and how as a blind girl, I know I have it, I deal with it, all the nitty gritty details. And I'm surprised it took me this long to make this video, but I'm also surprised I'm here making it. You guys know this has been a question I've received on my channel since the beginning of the channel. In fact, top five blind girl essentials, something like that. I'm gonna, if I can find the comment thread, I'm gonna like show some of it here because somebody asked how I know when I get my period. And there was a comment thread of like 200 plus comments of people discussing my monthly cycle. And I was like, wow. And at the time I wasn't at a place where I was confident enough or comfortable enough to feel like I could talk about that on the internet. So I would always joke, when a tampon company sponsors me to talk about my period, I'll do it. And then it stopped being a joke and I was just like, yeah, why not? Wait for that. Wait it out. And finally, Playtex Sport reached out to me and here we are doing it. I'm so excited. Playtex Sport is one of those really awesome tampons because it's 360 degree design. It moves with your body. I use it often when I'm swimming, when I'm running, when I'm working out of any kind. And especially when I am wearing something where I don't want panty lines. I am typically somebody who on my period wears a pad if I'm not being active. So when I do wear a tampon, I want one that's like extra comfortable because it's not something that I typically wear. Um, so when I'm playing sports, when I'm swimming, or when I don't want panty lines with a certain outfit, this is my go-to. So when they reached out, I was like, um, actually, yeah. Playtex, I love you already, so let's do this. Show you some education in case there's any boys watching this. I feel like this is the thing every guy should know about. I don't know, is that weird? I feel like men should like be comfortable about periods and should like talk to their wives, their girlfriends. There's, like I just feel like it should be a comfortable topic for men to be a part of. And every boyfriend I've had, he has been aware. Okay, so boom, we've got her out. That simple. It's like she's actually like so nice it feels like such a nice material she's a good one so if you're looking for a tampon that has a leak proof barrier that moves with you that you can use when you're being active this is the one because it was actually voted the best athletic tampon so there you go yay thank you to our sponsor because now everybody gets to know what they've wanted to know for way too long how i deal with my periods as a blind girl now, I am one blind girl and I get my period. I am not saying this is how every blind girl deals with their period. I'm speaking for myself. So don't think that this is what every blind girl does or this is how it goes for every blind girl because we're all different. Just like every woman experiences a different period and a different cycle, all blind women deal with it in different ways. So I got my period very young. I actually started developing breasts when I was eight, which is funny because I have a really small chest, but it's been about the same size since I was like 10. Um, I started getting hips when I was around 10. Um, so I was just always developed a little bit earlier than a lot of the other girls in my class, which is, I feel like everyone's always like, oh, the bigger girls get it first. But I've always been like the smallest girl in my class and I got it first. Um, I was in grade six. I was 11 years old when I got my period. It was October. It was rainy. It was cold. And we were going on a class field trip. And I was at a new school. 
when I left the school that I was in in grade five, nobody I knew had their period. My new school, I wasn't like close enough with any of the girls to talk about it, but as far as I knew, nobody had their period. I woke up, I was wearing my favorite pastel yellow Paul Frank pajamas. They were so soft. They were so comfortable. I whipped my pants off. I got dressed and I went to the bathroom and I was feeling kind of sick. My stomach kind of hurt. I wasn't feeling good. And I walked back into my bedroom and I told my mom. And at the time, she happened to be picking my pajamas up off the floor. And she looked into my light yellow pajamas and she could see that I had gotten my period. And so she told me what it was. She told me why I was feeling that way. We got Advil. Usually it's on the lighter side, so we got panty liners and she got me like a special lunch. I got like pop and like special things that I wouldn't usually get to bring to school for lunch. It was exciting, but it was like so cold and rainy and we were on a field trip and I like didn't know how to deal with it. I was real stressed all day. I didn't feel good. Yeah, that was like the first time I got my period. Every month after that, uh, I had enough vision at the time to see when I got my period. So I would be able to see in my underwear or whatever that there was some red blood. So every time I would just deal with it. But then as you guys know, if you follow my journey, at 14 I ended up losing the majority of my vision. At that same time, I dealt with really severe depression. I'm somebody, you know, those emotional eaters. I've always joked like I'm an emotional uneater. Like I don't eat when I'm stressed, when I'm anxious, when I'm depressed. I struggle to eat. We're, I'm gonna make a whole separate journey at some point, hopefully soon, about my journey with weight loss and weight gain and where I'm at now in that journey um, because there's a lot to it, but essentially I, I hardly ate for a very long time in my grade eight year. Um, so I would usually eat like about a protein bar and a protein shake a day and some water. Most days that was it. I lost my period. I lost my period for, I wanna say about two years. And the way the doctor explained it to me is basically my body went into fight or flight mode. When I was going blind, I was when I was dealing with depression, I was dealing with suicidal ideation, I wasn't eating enough to sustain my body. I, and my body shut down everything that wasn't essential for it to survive. And so my body told itself, you don't need your period to live. So I lost my period for a couple of years. Um, as I got healthier, both mentally and physically, I was eating the right foods, taking supplements, giving my body enough nutrients. I was in a much healthier mindset. I was happy. I was settled into my life as a blind woman, or at least, you know, on that journey to recovery. Um, my period returned one month. At that point, that was when I had to start figuring out, okay, now I'm actually getting my period and, and I can't see. How am I going to deal with this? And for a very long time after my period returned, it wasn't a normal cycle. I didn't get a period every four weeks or every five weeks. You know, every woman's cycle varies a little bit, but mine was like, oh, every two months, every six weeks, every, like it was just random. I never knew when I was gonna get it. Usually by the time I got it, it was, it was really severe. I dealt with very bad cramps. I would throw up on my period. I would have to miss school. I couldn't stand. I was going to like specialists, like top gynecologists to, try to figure out what was happening. I was basically having like contractions, which obviously like your uterus is contracting to get the, the tissue and the blood out. But I was having like birth level contractions and it was really, really awful. So I went through a lot to try to figure that out. And ultimately like nothing, we never really figured out what it was. I am also somebody who cannot take traditional birth control. Condoms are my only option for both birth control. Um, luckily I'm not allergic to latex or anything, thank God, because I personally can't take the pill, the IUD, um, none of the traditional methods of hormone replacement birth control or therapies or uh, any, any of those do not work for me. I get really, really severe reactions, but more importantly, um, I have low protein S in my liver, which means I'm more prone to clotting, to getting blood clots. If you read any warning sign for any form of birth control that isn't a condom, you'll see that if you're prone to blood clots, you cannot take it because it's a risk for blood clots. They weren't able to like level my period out through that, but eventually somehow it just kind of worked itself out and I started becoming 
much more regular. I was working with a nutritionist and a naturopath at the time. So I was using naturopathic remedies. I can't say like that's what worked definitively and I can't tell you to go do that. But if I had to guess, it helped um, and I became more regular. Now at this point in my life, how do I know when I get my periods and how do I deal with it? I'm 25 years old at this point. So I've been dealing with my period for 14 years. My periods vary in length between I'd say four to seven days, which I think is like pretty standard. Um, they're not light, but they're not heavy. I feel like I have a pretty standard flow. And at this point, thankfully, most periods I deal with pretty like standard cramping. It can get kind of bad. I take Advil, I use a heating pad. I'll like lay in bed and, and moan for half an hour <laughs> when it's really bad, but like it's nothing nearly as severe as I used to deal with or as many women unfortunately still deal with, which I'm very thankful for. I am somebody who deals with a lot of ovarian cysts, however, which if you've dealt with them, you know it's very painful. From my understanding, again, I'm no professional, I'm no expert, but from my understanding as a woman who deals with frequent cysts bursting, um, there's multiple types of cysts one of which occurs when you're ovulating. That is the type of ovarian cyst that I get. I get cysts when I ovulate and some months they burst, some months they don't. I am very aware when I'm ovulating. Every month, for me, I am somebody who doesn't need to be told from an app or a calendar that I am ovulating. I won't go into detail, but my body makes it very clear to me every month when I'm ovulating. I at least, that's like a part of me mentally being like, okay, I'm ovulating, tracking my cycle that way. I am curious though, so I'm gonna throw the question out to you guys. Do you use any period tracking apps and do they work? And if you do use them, are you blind and use them with voice software? <laughs> because that's important to me. Um, I've definitely toyed with the idea because I do feel like as a blind woman, if they are accurate, if there's a good one out there, that could be a really good way of helping me. But frankly, I'm so busy at this point in my life that to sit down and take the time to like, start one up is just it keeps getting put on the back burner but is something in my mind i'm like i feel like that could be really helpful for blind people to track their periods i mean for all women but for especially women who can't see the blood it would be really helpful but it would need to be voice software accessible so i don't know let me know if you've ever used those but at this point i don't i kind of mentally track it so i do know when my body is ovulating and i am typically around the th uh, four week mark give or take. But what's a bigger indicator to me is every month without fail, two weeks to 10 days prior to my period, I start showing real PMS symptoms. Usually 10 days, but if my body's being real persnickety, it'll be two weeks. I get very swollen, tender breasts. I usually go up about a cup size um, when I'm PMSing. So I get good cleavage for like 10 days of the month. It's pretty bomb. I also get twinges. Um, kind of some pressure, some pain from time to time at, within those 10 days. I get often pretty severe cravings. So there's just certain things I notice. And then usually the day before my period, I get like a real burst of energy. I'm like cleaning the house. I'm nesting. I'm like tidying up. I'm so like peppy, full of energy. And the next day I, it's like, oh yeah, there is my period. Um, I will sometimes deal with sleep problems, like I, my hormones like are just too out of whack, so I won't be able to sleep or I'll be really tired. And the odd month, if I've been dealing with a lot of stress within that month, I'll get quite emotional. Like I'll just cry over things and I'm not a crier. I don't cry easily, but all of a sudden I'll just be crying and really like down. So I feel like those are pretty common PMS symptoms that if you are somebody who does experience PMS, you experience at least some of those symptoms. So then I'm like, okay, we're really getting ready. It's about to happen. The thing that will throw my period out of whack a little bit is if I'm flying a lot in a month or if I am stressed, I'll usually know it'll come a bit late, but that's obviously like not a for sure. So within like the few days where I know like it's probably gonna come between like say the 22nd and the 24th, within those three days. And I know this is what I'm like scared to admit. And I know people are probably gonna judge me. Even probably some blind people are gonna judge me and think it's gross or weird. But this is just, this is just how I do it um, at this point in my life. And so usually if I feel like, oh, maybe I have my period, I'll go to the bathroom, I will wipe, and I will show my mom my toilet paper. And I'll say, am I bleeding? 
and she'll be able to tell me if I'm spotting yet because usually my period at this point it used to start with like a full gush but at this point it starts with a light spotting to a heavier flow there's no way of like oh it's so graphic to get into this but like when I was younger and my period was really bad during those high school years after I got it back from losing it. Because it would start really full force, like really heavy, you like wipe and you could you could feel it. Um, and there's a scent to it. I know this all sounds so gross, um, but look, it's like natural. We, most women have periods. We all know there is a typical smell and when you wipe, it's more wet. <laughs> and so, than when you've just like typically peed. So that's how I used to know, but because my periods now are much different and they're much lighter to begin with, I don't usually have a smell and I don't usually feel it when I wipe. So if I think, oh, I'm feeling crampy and I know it's around the time, I'll usually just go to my mom. She's my best friend. We're really, really close. And I'll say to her, do I have my period? And I think I got used to that because when I was in high school and I was going to a lot of specialists and gynecologists, I, I would have to track the color of my blood, which doctors, you know, depending on what medical thing you're going through, like there's doctors who will ask you to like track the color of your stool or the color of the blood or the color of your urine. Like those are common things doctors will ask or even like the color of your phlegm, whatever medical thing you're dealing with, but I've never been able to do that. So I had like a lung infection years ago and they needed to know the color of the phlegm that was coming up and I would have to cough and show my mom. Back when I was going to sick kids gynecology unit to track my period and figure out what's going on, why I was getting severe pains, I would have to show my mom the blood so she could track the color. So I think I just got used to that. So for me at this point, it's not weird being like, hey mom, am I bleeding? Um, and I know obviously I won't live with my mom forever and that won't be an option forever, which is why I'm interested in doing period trackers and seeing if they're, if they work well. You know, when I had a boyfriend for two and a half years, like he and I were very, very close. He was my best friend for four years before we even started dating. And at a certain point, I just did the same thing that I do with my mom. You know, like if I was wondering, I'd be like, do I have my period? And he would tell me. And again, I know like not every, like a lot of women would be like, wow, that's like really comfortable. But we were the kind of boyfriend and girlfriend that like, I would pee in the same bathroom that when he was shaving. Like we were just really, we were that couple, you know, we were like really close. And I do think blindness is a part of, is something that brings you closer to those in your life because there is ways in which you do rely on them more. It can bond you a lot quicker and a lot closer than you may experience with traditional relationships between mothers and daughters or boyfriend and girlfriend. So that's that. That's at this point my whole period journey up till now and how I experience it and deal with it. You know, I'm somebody who, like I said, on the regular basis, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, I use a pad. And then when I'm doing sports, when I'm swimming, when I'm in a nice slinky dress, I use a tampon. So I want to say thank you again so much to Playtex Sport for sponsoring this video and giving the people what they want. Now we can all stop talking about it. You know, all the ins and outs, the gory details of how I deal with my monthly cycle as a blind woman. Again, this is not all blind women. If you are comfortable enough as another fellow blind woman to share in the comment section how you deal with your period, feel free, but no pressure because I know this isn't a topic that makes everybody comfortable. Um, but it's natural. It's part of life. And that's my experience. So there you go. Give this a thumbs up if you appreciate my can candid honesty. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time I upload about the ins and outs of my life. 